being a black folks and so pay attention to the truth you watch the news and you, if you keep your ears open you'll pretty much hear the truth so they didn't lie to you so anyway below uh we got the moon here not to scale but below the earth so we know that when we go to fire and we'll see if the times are correct the same anywhere else but at 1039 utc 41 seconds point three two one to be exact that's not the moon okay now one thing to look at too is if you get the, there are certain satellite feeds that you can see earth during the day and the moon during the evening that they have a uh, camera on their private satellite feed where you pay for TV service okay and I'm not going to advertise for them but anyway you can see the light propagation which is at an angle which is quite oh hello Karasov how you doing because I didn't do that so anyway let's take a look at, at this So the moon's that far away from Earth right now. Now we know that most everything is in orbit. In So that's our stereo play, our orbit right now. So as you see, the quite unusual, as you can even see on the diagram, because it is exact, and it even shows the remnants that are orbit with the moon and that orbit with Earth. Okay, that's Earth. But look at the angle difference of light. Okay, and also... I always just bang out the uh, so basically we'll see that 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 should not be the moon okay either that or it's giving us a reflection and we're not actually you know you're not seeing the moon because you should not see the moon in the location where the moon is at 1030 and let me blow that up so you see that and then, there you can see the clock at 1039 UTC and then that's what the diagram also is brought up to so let's go up and see what we've got for other ones because basically this one is that's the same shot because I just opened it up and that looks to be the same shot so we'll go to here which will be a different shot and it'll be from the New Mexico State University the New Mexico one of the New Mexico skies and there you go that should not be the moon should not be the moon folks okay because basically unless everybody we got more than one moon then right now which we really shouldn't but in the future now viewing wise sooner or later oricus or orca because oricus is and he says he named it after the island because it's oricus island well oricus island is orca because it's a big island okay in the area where he knows where he used to go fishing at when he was a kid story story stories but anyway orcus is going to be back around i think what was it going to be 2000 and eh, i don't know whatever go back and watch one of my old, old videos so anyway we can blow so i get someone sent me a link for a, a free upload of snapshot again or something like that because i'm not going to pay for it so anyway because there's other ways of taking pictures but anyway take a snapshot and zoom in on that and see what you get it'll probably be a 3d sun star or planet because like i say at that UTC time, at nighttime, okay, basically that was looking at nighttime sky, okay, in Arizona at that time because 10 UTC, you just do the, the math, and that's eight hours difference. That's over in the UK, so in Europe. So basically, the moon is down there, it's below Earth, okay, so that's not the moon. Factually, the moon should not have been in the horizon. Okay, should have not have been in view at that time. Okay, on that shot, and also on the other shot at uh, the other shot was from Huntsville. Okay, so there you've got an object, and basically, I don't know about planets. So let's take a look at that. I remember on Tuesday night of this week. There was a large green, they said a whale size, and we got to remember it was 2 a.m. Uh, the, the trooper was sober, though, and I think it was Lynchburg, Kentucky, or somewhere close, a Lynchburg on the East Coast area. 
uh, said that they saw, and then basically like uh, on Wednesday evening, there was a streak seen across the sky, and it was not the time lapse photo of the Skylab, whatever they want to call that lab, the International Space Station. So basically, uh, we got. We'll see about any clo how close any of this stuff was that basically you see here. Which basically we're still not in a fall solstice anymore, so we should not be having this many uh, fireballs, orbit asteroids, anything going by Earth as much. Which is the idea of where we are at in space. I'll take you to Asgard's NASA sky chart in a second. We'll see what we'll get there. And like I say, I just rawly knock these out <coughs> for videos. And basically, the moon was that far left and down below Earth. So basically, you should not have seen that in North America on the skyline, especially that high at that time. And then over to the right would have been Saturn. And then Mars. And remember that this is already positioned, so what you would see when you're looking at that Asgard, but you're looking up at the, at the sky. So you got Saturn. And Mars. Okay, and then all these are your constellations out there. So more than likely, the only thing that I know that would more than likely it would be is it could possibly be, and I do believe there's a pretty much a super giant star in just about every constellation. Okay, could be like this over here of that constellation. I had a new constellation link too, so I could know them buggered right off the bat. Okay, the second to the last one, one just before the last one, was 0.568 IU, and the other one up was closer, should come up closer being 4 something IU. At least one of these is, it's not that one. That one's farther out, the other one was 5 on the bottom. That means five distances from, like, Earth to the sun. Uh, you, and there's the close one, I believe. And unless one of the other ones is closer. This this was the closest one right there. All right. And you know that that was not the moon, because it would not have been on the horizon in New Mexico. You wouldn't have seen it. You shouldn't have been able to see it. And no matter what, if you are seeing it, why is it showing up so bright and full? Okay. If I possibly could be wrong on the horizon, why is it so bright and full? And let's see the data on that one. So we got one real close at 0 0.036 are you? So that's pretty close. Not hella close though. I mean that's you got to get about two or three zeros in front of that to get within uh, I think below you know like 20,000 miles or something like that. That's if I remember right, something like 16,000 miles or something away is what's going to be the close stuff in uh, January and February or something of uh, 2013. Okay, that's when we're going to have the close stuff. So I go to RSOE real fast to see about the closest object that we had, because basically that would have been this one up on top here. I can think I can move that there. That would have been that one. You can see the streak pretty good. And this was last night, folks. Okay, the 12th. Not not uh, the Wednesday night stuff. So once again, uh, that's somewhat closer. So it's still I can do a computation real fast too. We'll throw it and see how how many miles that is away. And yeah, they do have it listed as a storm, geometric storm going on. And basically, the temperatures dropped a little bit. Okay, I mean, we've been watching that temperature. And there's what the moon that they're saying it should look like, but remember that you do have tilt on that moon. So, there's the latest and there's your auroral. Way off on the south, north off a decent amount. There is a CME, I think, on here. Should be one dropping down here. There it comes. Okay, and I wanted to show the cross phase that I missed, I think, earlier today. And lots of roll or activity, s either by magnetical, electrical, the scar that we are seeing, very parallel. I think you know the word I wanted to say there. 
anyhow there's your scars and here's our cross phase over here on our electrical whammo yes folks electrons is electricity and as you see they're getting some breakup on some CME action of and once again we take a look real fast here I think we is at the next level yeah we'll see what we got for a classification this is still saying in B looks kind of calm on the classification chart we're getting that heartbeat though but that's what's wild that right now we're getting a new signature on that heartbeat you see this razor kind of like action okay on that it's pretty much the cardiogram of the sun there ladies and gentlemen okay and then today would have been low your earthquake and it pretty much is uh, they're getting a, a quite a decent amount and I would say more than likely we're probably gonna get something below the course to Antarctica and if you look at the graphs the earlier video I showed too, the graph does show that they're getting activity down there so another week these areas will be here more than likely Brazil and more than likely out in the the deep Atlantic out by uh, I don't know where the sea starts I don't have it down to a gnat's ass of where the separation of what they call the seas are over there so basically Cuba Dominican Republic and also over here and and there's some more wild north south jet stream action folks even at the higher one okay and then they've even been mentioning lately on the news of interesting lower jet streams okay and we will go and look down here a little bit lower too and I believe we will see it almost looks normal jet stream for a minute and that's not this here but it would, I'll say when it gets normal what we would normally be used to that is in that wild check those goat spots out or now there would be a normal almost almost okay for a second we almost had a normal jet stream for a little while I'll try to say that again but here check that out that's wild see those two holes so that almost there would be almost a normal jet stream okay we hope that don't turn into a storm out there check that out big old cloud bank out in the Atlantic right up there now it takes uh, basically three point something minutes for the sunlight from the Sun to get to us in the supergiants so it only takes 18 seconds for that comet's light to have showed up last night so that's still a hell of a long ways away but it's still a hell of closer than the Sun okay 3.35 million miles that was away and basically you end up seeing it in the night sky folks there you go that was that one right there okay so and let's see for miles and the fastest one when you pay attention to what's coming through fast was that the fast not I mean what I'm saying is that one wasn't the fast you see it but I think the one below it was at 74 something kilomiles a second folks that's hauling ass so that one's hauling booty this one here okay more than likely it's that and that and might have been two at the same time bam and bam and basically more than likely it's Rigel and Pateglius, Betelgeuse is someone a lot of people know Bellatrix and all that stuff so and Cyrus is over there too but as you see Cyrus is farther to the left and this is the NASA map so the idea that more than likely it was Rigel but it could be one of Cyrus's other star friends in the supergiants so basically some friends along with 212 F35 which is uh, 110 meter and moving at 14 7k right there and it was farther out than what this object that we've seen on fireball that was close okay so this thing is farther out than the 3 million miles a little bit so so distances we're not worried about I keep on telling people that because we've learned, oh, I've learned over the last year, and you guys have too. We keep on seeing these all used, and God, that's close, that's close, that's close. No. Remember, January and February of 2013, start researching there. That's the closest we're going to get to some stuff for quite a while. So this is moving fast at 25 kilom kilometers a second. So, and it's almost a one kilometer. So we'll probably get some pretty good activity on that. It's just that when I mentioned before, it's going to be very interesting when we had the one 8.7. Remember, I told on the Monday before that.